Throughout history, monarchs have been viewed as figures of awe and authority, draped in luxury and wielding immense power. Behind closed doors, many of these rulers harbored personal habits and superstitions that were anything but regal. Today, we lift the veil on these hidden aspects of royal life, exploring the revolting habits and peculiar behaviors that have been quietly omitted from history books. Isabella I of Castile, a figure synonymous with power and piety, harbored an aversion to bathing that was as remarkable as her political achievements. In an age where sanitation and hygiene were often misunderstood, Isabella's extreme practices stood out even among her contemporaries. She reportedly bathed only twice in her lifetime, once during her youth and once before her marriage to Ferdinand of Aragon. The belief that bathing exposed the body to diseases by opening the pores was widely accepted, but Isabella's stringent adherence to this idea set her apart. Her court struggled to cope with the queen's hygiene. To mask the resulting odors, the air around Isabella was constantly infused with the scent of burning herbs such as rosemary, lavender, and thyme. These were not just for aesthetics, they were essential for maintaining a bearable environment. Despite these efforts, the Queen's chambers were often described as oppressive, with the pungent mix of sweat, perfume, and smoke permeating the atmosphere. Isabella's personal habits extended to her wardrobe. Her garments, often elaborate and heavy, were rarely cleaned, adding another layer to the olfactory assault on her court. These clothes, worn for weeks or even months, absorbed sweat and odors, becoming breeding grounds for lice and other pests. Her ladies-in-waiting bore the brunt of this reality, silently enduring the task of maintaining the Queen's appearance while navigating the challenges of her hygiene. Interestingly, Isabella's disdain for water did not hinder her public image. She was viewed as a devout and disciplined ruler, embodying the virtues of chastity and humility. Her contemporaries admired her for her strict moral code and her role in unifying Spain, often overlooking or dismissing her personal habits as a small price to pay for her leadership. Her religious devotion played a significant role in shaping her views on hygiene. Isabella believed in the purification of the soul over the body, often engaging in lengthy prayer and penance. This spiritual focus reinforced her belief that bathing was unnecessary, even detrimental, to her spiritual well-being. Her legacy, however, highlights the paradox of a queen who unified a kingdom while perpetuating some of the most peculiar personal practices of her time. Henry VIII, known for his six marriages and the establishment of the Church of England, was a larger-than-life figure in every sense. His imposing physical presence and commanding personality were legendary. But by the later years of his reign, his health had deteriorated significantly. Central to his suffering was a festering leg wound, the result of a jousting accident in 1536. This injury never healed properly, becoming a chronic ulcer that emitted a foul odor and required constant attention. The smell from the king's leg was so overpowering that it became a defining feature of his presence. His physicians attempted to manage the wound with rudimentary treatments, draining pus and applying ointments. Despite their efforts, the condition worsened over time and the king's mobility became severely limited. Henry, once an active and athletic monarch, grew morbidly obese, further complicating his health issues. His chambers at Hampton Court were filled with the scent of burning herbs, used to mask the stench of his wound. This practice, though somewhat effective, did little to improve the overall atmosphere. The king's physical decline mirrored his political struggles, as his court became increasingly fraught with intrigue and dissent. His temper, always fiery, grew even more volatile as his pain escalated, leading to a reign characterized by fear and unpredictability. Despite his condition, Henry remained a formidable ruler. 
he continued to assert his authority, engaging in political manoeuvring and military campaigns. His court, though burdened by the king's declining health, maintained its elaborate rituals and ceremonies, upholding the image of royal power and stability. Henry's legacy, however, is inextricably linked to his personal struggles, highlighting the complex interplay between physical health and political leadership. King George IV of Great Britain, known for his indulgent lifestyle, was a monarch whose life of excess extended far beyond the dining table. George's gluttony was notorious, leading to an enormous weight gain that rendered him nearly immobile in his later years. His constant feasting and drinking led him to neglect personal hygiene altogether. Bathing became an inconvenience he could no longer manage, and he opted instead to cover his odour with heavy powders and perfumes. George's love of food was unparalleled. He was known to consume lavish meals that featured dozens of dishes, with a particular fondness for rich pastries, meats and puddings. His excessive eating habits contributed to a variety of health problems, including gout and dropsy, an accumulation of fluid in the tissues, which further restricted his mobility. This left him confined to his chambers for long periods, where the lack of ventilation and accumulated odours from sweat, stale food and tobacco smoke became unbearable. To hide the stench, George liberally applied powders and perfumes, creating a heavy and almost nauseating mix of scents. His chambers were filled with the smell of spilled food and stale wine, masked only partially by these perfumed powders. Even those loyal to him could barely tolerate the conditions of his quarters, and courtiers would often find excuses to leave his presence as quickly as possible. George's weight also contributed to respiratory problems, making his breathing loud and laboured, which added to the discomfort of those around him. George's appearance mirrored his lifestyle. He dressed in elaborate, ornate clothing, but his corpulent figure and lack of hygiene made his appearance less than regal. He was often seen sweating profusely, his face flushed from overindulgence. Despite his personal failings, George maintained a fondness for opulence, filling his chambers with gold, marble and expensive artwork. His focus on luxury and self-indulgence made him one of Britain's most reviled monarchs by the public, who resented his lavish spending during a time of economic hardship for the nation. George IV's lifestyle took a severe toll on his health. His constant eating, drinking and refusal to address his hygiene left him in physical decline, bedridden and suffering from a myriad of ailments. By the time of his death in 1830, George was a shell of the figure he had once been. A king whose legacy was marked by excess and indulgence rather than achievement or reform. Henrietta Maria of France, wife of King Charles I of England, was known for her peculiar and often disturbing eating habits. A devout Catholic and loyal to her French heritage, Henrietta was already viewed with suspicion by the English court. Her bizarre eating preferences only added to the intrigue and discomfort surrounding her presence. During her pregnancies, she developed cravings for raw meat, claiming that the uncooked flesh provided her with strength and nourishment for her unborn child. This habit horrified the English courtiers, who were unaccustomed to seeing their queen consume food in such an unorthodox way. The sight and smell of raw meat on her plate, sometimes barely seasoned or prepared, made those around her queasy. It was a time when dining etiquette was highly valued, and Henrietta's behaviour was not only unsettling, but also seen as a breach of royal decorum. In a deeply religious and superstitious society, Henrietta's diet stirred rumours. Many believed her taste for raw meat was a sign of something darker. Some even speculated about witchcraft or strange French customs. For a queen already struggling to gain the trust of her English subjects, 
these rumors only further alienated her. Her preference for rare meats and unusual foods continued throughout her life, becoming a hallmark of her unconventional reputation. Despite her unconventional habits, Henrietta was fiercely devoted to her husband and her role as queen. She faced many hardships, including the English Civil War, which led to her husband's execution. After Charles I's death, Henrietta returned to France, where she spent her remaining years in relative obscurity. Peter the Great of Russia, famed for his efforts to modernize and westernize his country, harbored a strange fascination with dentistry. While he achieved much in terms of political reform, naval expansion, and cultural advancement, his peculiar passion for pulling teeth cast a disturbing shadow over his reign. Peter was fascinated by the emerging field of dental medicine and often took it upon himself to act as a dentist without formal training. The Tsar's obsession with dentistry began after he traveled across Europe, where he encountered modern practices and techniques in the arts and sciences. Among these discoveries was the field of dentistry, which piqued his interest to an extreme degree. Upon returning to Russia, he took up the habit of extracting teeth, both his own and those of his courtiers. His fascination was not limited to those suffering from dental pain. He would often seek out volunteers among his courtiers to practice his skills, pulling healthy teeth as a demonstration of his knowledge and enthusiasm. Peter's courtiers, eager to please their powerful and often unpredictable leader, rarely refused his requests. However, the experience was undoubtedly painful, as anesthesia was rudimentary or non-existent at the time. Peter's rough technique and lack of formal training made the procedure agonizing, and his subjects often emerged from his dental sessions with swollen gums and painful mouths. Peter's dental obsession became a form of entertainment for him, with dental tools becoming part of his traveling kit whenever he embarked on expeditions or campaigns. His fascination reflected his larger-than-life personality, a man who pursued every interest with relentless zeal, often without regard for the consequences. While Peter is celebrated as one of Russia's greatest leaders, his bizarre interest in amateur dentistry remains a curious footnote in his legacy, reflecting the eccentric and often brutal nature of his reign. Louis XI of France, known as the Spider King for his cunning and strategic mind, was a monarch whose eccentricities included a bizarre belief in the magical properties of insects, particularly fleas. In a time when superstition permeated every layer of society, Louis's faith in the power of fleas went beyond the norm. He believed that fleas and other vermin held protective qualities and could grant him strength, a conviction that influenced his personal hygiene in unexpected ways. Louis intentionally wore old, dirty clothing that he believed would attract fleas, thinking that their presence would act as a shield against misfortune and curses. This habit shocked his courtiers and created a deeply uncomfortable environment around him. The sight of a king deliberately fostering an infestation of insects in his clothing was disturbing, even in a time when hygiene standards were relatively low. The king's preference for flea-infested garments created an atmosphere of discomfort and unease within the court. Courtiers who interacted closely with him had to contend with the insects, and endure the resulting odors. His clothes, unwashed and unkempt, contributed to his reputation as an eccentric, if not outright mad, ruler. Louis's belief in Flea's protective properties extended to his personal chambers, where he avoided cleaning or removing any potential habitats for insects. Beyond his strange superstitions, Louis XI was an effective ruler, consolidating power and strengthening the French monarchy. Yet his personal habits, coupled with his eccentric beliefs, created a paradox. A ruler revered for his cunning, but remembered for his odd attachment to vermin. 
For those around him, the Spider King was a figure of both respect and revulsion. Another king of France, Louis XIV, the Sun King, is remembered as the ultimate symbol of absolute monarchy, with the Palace of Versailles serving as a testament to his grandeur. Yet, behind the gilded facade of opulence lay a man plagued by chronic health issues, most notably painful hemorrhoids. His aversion to bathing was consistent with the era's medical beliefs, which held that water weakened the body and could invite illness. Instead of regular bathing, Louis relied on an elaborate regimen of perfumes. His personal scent was a carefully curated mix of musk and floral notes, designed to mask the odors of a body that rarely saw water. Versailles itself became a palace of perfumes, with courtiers and servants following the king's example. The air was heavy with the mingling scents of colognes, herbs and incense, creating an artificial freshness that barely concealed the underlying stench. Lewis's hemorrhoids, however, could not be hidden as easily. These painful swellings caused him great discomfort, often limiting his ability to sit or ride horses, two activities integral to his daily life and royal image. His condition was so severe that it eventually required surgical intervention. The operation, performed without modern anesthesia, was a harrowing ordeal, though it reportedly brought some relief. Louis's health problems extended beyond hemorrhoids. He suffered from dental issues, frequent bouts of fever, and various other ailments throughout his life. Yet, his resilience and ability to maintain his authority despite these challenges underscored his determination to project an image of invincibility. His reign, though marked by personal pain, remains a defining chapter in the history of French monarchy.